You ever look up at the sky to find a plane by its sound and then never actually see the plane? Or it's in a different place than you here? Things like this might make you think that we are not very good at perceiving the direction of sound accurately. But trust me, we are. And I'm going to prove it to you. I have set up a virtual audio space with software that emulates binaural audio so you can hear me walking around your head. Note that this isn't simply stereo audio like a Blue Yeti would record. This accurately simulates how the average person's hearing works. More on that later. Telling sound from left to right is pretty easy, but you already knew that. The question is whether you can tell up from below and front from back. Let's test it. I will play a sound three times at the same distance from you, but at different locations. I want you to visualize where the sound is coming from in your head. It can be literally anywhere around you. If you want to be really accurate, I recommend sitting up and having nothing directly around you like walls as to not trick your mind. Ready? Let's do it. Are you confident in your answers? No worries if you are not for now. To reveal the answers, the first was played here, the second one was played here, and finally the third one was played here. How did you do? I deliberately played a sound that would be unfamiliar to you in a 3D setting, which makes things a little harder. However, I will now play the same sound in different spots again, but this time showing you where they are too. This should help train your mind. And now, let's redo the test. Once again, three sounds. Visualize where you hear them. I'll tell you the answers right away this time. That sound was over here. That second sound was played here. And finally that third sound was played there. So, did it go any better that time? It theoretically should have since I taught you the 3D profile of that sound. Do take it with a pinch of salt though, it does work better on some people than others. Why should it work at all though? Well our brains are capable of processing very complex inputs and can differentiate between even minor differences to create a cohesive scene in our mind. The primary clue is loudness. Something to your left will sound much louder in your left ear, obviously. That doesn't mean that the other ear can barely hear it though. If I mute the left channel, then you can still clearly hear my voice, despite still being on the other side. It is quieter, but also slightly muffled, since it has to either travel around your head or through your head, diffusing some of the high frequencies. Your brain can also pick up on the time difference between the two ears, further helping you differentiate the two sides. But how does it tell front, back, below and above? The key here is the shape of the ear. For front and back especially, the shape of the ear modulates the sound enough for the brain to pick up on. Also keep in mind that in real life situations, we rotate our heads if we are unclear of the direction. Dogs do the same thing when listening to you. You may have unwillingly done the same during the test. Having access to such technology, I can just go ahead and create a really complex scene. Without me even helping, you can easily create an image in your mind about where you currently are and where everything in the room is. In fact, you can probably even tell how big the room is. This is thanks to your brain also picking up on the reverb and reflections of the sound happening in the room. If I remove those effects, the scale of the room is immediately lost to you. Let me move you to a different scenario. You probably recognize a classic sound here, which is the rail making a noise that indicates a coming train. We cannot yet hear or see the train, yet we know it's coming since, in different mediums, sound travels at different speeds. In train tracks, which is still, the speed is about 6000 meters per second, much faster than in air. When you actually begin hearing the train, what you hear first are the low frequencies, this is due to the fact that the high frequencies get absorbed easier as they vibrate more surfaces and thus lose more energy. What if there is no medium, like air? For example, what if we were floating in space? 
Obviously, you won't be able to talk to another astronaut floating without a device. What if the device is broken? The only option in that case would be to push each other's helmets together and have the sound waves travel through the helmet's material. You would of course have to scream at the top of your lungs and the other person would kind of sound like this. Can you hear me? This is in motion. If our brains are so sophisticated as to tell exactly where sound is coming from, then why is that darn plane not in the right place? Just as with our other senses, hearing can be tricked too. I am sure you are aware of optical illusions like this one. I asked a bunch of people and it seems this doesn't actually work for any of them, yet the effect is really strong for me. Let me know if this is effective for you or if I am just going crazy. But there exists auditorial illusions as well. The main culprit of them is the fact that sound isn't very fast. The plane can leave by the time you hear its sound. Furthermore, as shown in other previous examples, sound reflects. If you have buildings around, the sound can bounce in very unpredictable ways. This is why, for example, thunder sounds the way it does. The further you are from the lightning, the more chances the sound had to bounce and diffuse on the clouds, mountains, buildings, etc. Another great example of this is the Kennedy assassination. I know this is random, but don't worry, I won't be going into politics. Witnesses on the scene of the shooting were asked about where they heard the shots coming from, and as described by papers like this, the testimonials were in great disagreement. Not only about the location of the gunshots, but even the number of them wasn't 100% clear. The paper talks about how humans are indeed really good at 3D audio perception in ideal conditions, but the acoustics of the Daily Plaza are far from simple. A huge number of factors are at play, starting with the complex acoustics of rifle gunshots. Since the bullet travels faster than the sound, the shockwave generated by it would reach the observer standing in front of the shooter first. But the shockwave doesn't give information about the origin of the bullet. And since the brain prioritizes audio that arrives first, the sound of the muzzle blast combining with the shockwave is not perceived clearly by the mind. The source is then made more ambiguous by the reflection of the sound waves from hard surfaces like the ground and nearby buildings. Lastly, the ear witnesses' emotions in the moment of the shooting further confuse their perception of the sound. Finally, an interesting effect of sound that I think is worth mentioning is active noise cancelling. If you have tried active noise cancelling headphones before, or even own one, you may be aware of how impressive they can be. Let's revisit the first location with them on. This is about the best money can buy right now, but how does it work? The idea behind it is to emit the inverted phase of the sound we want to cancel. Since audio waves go through interference, they essentially cancel each other out. Why is it not perfectly silent then? The problem is delay. It takes a little bit of time to generate the reverse phase. Long waves, aka the low frequencies, aren't too affected by the lag, but higher frequencies last too short of a time to have reverse phase generated for. For those frequencies, good old passive sound cancelling, that is the material of the headphones, does the job. In the ideal scenario, where the reverse phase could be generated at the exact same time, it would indeed be perfectly quiet. Don't believe me? Here is a song I wrote that I'm going to route through a separate channel and make it inverse. We get perfect silence. I can also change the volume of the reverse phase, and as I make it louder, the song becomes quieter. Audio interference is actually the very basis of sound synthesis. Basically, any sound can be achieved by combining waves and then applying different effects to them. As we combine two or more different waves, we get a new unique sound, but this is a topic for another time. So, with all of this, I hope you gained some appreciation to how amazing your ears are. Before you leave, you may not have seen that I made a playable version of the original Speed of Light project that you can play for free. So if you are interested, there is a link to that in the description. And if you want to support content like this, then you can check out the piano plugin that I used to create this song. Thanks to Adiasar and Sampleson for providing it. It is currently on sale till the end of the month, and if you purchase it through the link in the description, I will receive a royalty. Thanks for tuning in again, and I will see you next time.